your workouts are not something that typically works on a full-time including basis. You're not like, yeah, I've been doing bicep feeder workouts for a year. Like, that's probably not the smartest way to do it. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here from Renaissance Periodization. Feeder workouts, should you be doing them? So feeder workouts are a thing that I have been asked about approximately 9 trillion times. That's a rough estimate, but order of magnitude, it works. And what the hell are feeder workouts? First of all, just to clue you guys in that are not in the know. But if you Google it, a lot, a lot shows up. Basically, feeder workouts, and I really just don't, I, I don't understand what the term feeder, where that term comes from. And I, I concomitantly don't care enough to find out. And don't tell me. I don't want to know. Do not tell me in the comments where feeder workouts term comes from. But I can define it for you. Feeder workouts are when you do like usually one to two sets, maybe a few more, of an isolation movement typically on your off days from training or on your training days for another muscle group just later in the day. And you do these usually often. So they're kind of extra workouts that are just one or two or three sets of an isolation movement taken close to failure, and you kind of sprinkle them in throughout the week outside of your major sessions of training for any muscle and even that muscle itself. So for example, you would do like three feeder workouts for your biceps a week where you would do two normal workouts. Let's say you train chest and then biceps, you train back and then biceps another day. And then a couple times throughout the week, you get like the 20 pound dumbbells and you smash like two myo rep sets or something of dumbbell curls. Like, you know, you're studying at home and then after you, you're done studying, like for 30 minutes, you freshen up, just do some curls and then go back to studying. That, that's how I've seen it done before. And so these workouts are like the ultimate hack. Everyone thinks that this is how you get jacked and this is the thing that works. And it's obviously, if you haven't tried them, you're an idiot. You're just not availed to the secret you know, incel Reddit part of the internet that knows how to get jacked, but apparently never posts pictures of themselves. So stay calm, incels. I am actually, yes, talking about you. So the upsides, you guys thought I was just going to shit on it, but no worries. There are actually upsides. If you have a constrained schedule and you don't have as much training time for big two hour long workouts, just getting in some work here and there, one or two sets at a time every few days can let you get way more volume in, in that constraint schedule for a muscle or two that you're targeting for extra growth, totally. Another benefit is that you're kind of always hitting that muscle fresh. I mean, if you do a feeder workout for biceps, you just start with biceps and end with biceps. It's two sets or one set or three sets of biceps. You're fresh, you're ready to go, no problem. The thing is, is that some muscles recover much faster than the rest. So for example, if you're training your rear delts and you train them twice a week with other muscle groups, it could be that they're recovered like later that day. Some muscles can be trained five or six times a week and recover just fine between tra training sessions. And if you're training them with just one or two sets at a time, they can for sure recover on time. So that's definitely a good thing. A lot of people say, well, feeder workouts are stupid because you train once or twice a week for every muscle and that's good enough. For some muscles, it is. You know, your glutes, your pecs, they'll take a few days to recover for sure, maybe longer. But like your forearms, your biceps, your side delts, something like that, maybe even your calves under some circumstances, they can recover quick. So if a muscle can recover quick, and if you're already recovered enough to train that muscle, and you want the best gains, and you maybe train that muscle, and then it'll work, and that'll be great. And lastly, slower twitch muscles, and some people have a proportionally uh, higher fraction of slower twitch muscle in some muscle in their body, like slower twitch biceps or forearms or triceps or whatever, and those individuals with a high proportion of slow twitch muscle fibers, there's not really a good dependable way outside of muscle biopsy that you can find out if your muscles are slow twitch or not. But you will find out through a variety of proxies. One is like they respond better to higher reps than lower reps. And two, they recover really fast. Like people who take days and days to recover between muscle groups are typically on average by a small margin have more faster twitch fibers. People who can recover very rapidly or typically slower twitch, which also means they're typically not as strong. It means the joints and connective tissues won't take as much of a beating. They can recover within hours or days instead of days and potentially even up to a week. And they also struggle to grow as much. And the muscle turnover rate is faster. So 
for people who have that muscle fiber characteristic, or more of it rather, feeder workouts may actually be just the more logical prescription because if you recover faster and you need a more consistent stimulus to grow, feeder workouts are just that more consistent stimulus. So kind of uh, nobody lost, nobody found. Problem auto solved. There are downsides, however, so let me get to those. First, you need to have equipment around. Where the fuck are you supposed to do a feed of workout if you work in an office? Because you're going to get fucking two trash cans, bro, and just curl these shits. You curl the first one, the garbage dumps on you. You're like, well, fuck it. I might as well dump the rest of the garbage. And then that one girl from accounting walks in, and she's like, oh, my God, Frank, there's garbage on you. And you're like, oh, Sandy. And you kneel down, as is appropriate in these cases, and you're like, I fucking, I'm just garbage in your eyes. Please step on me. And she's like, oh, my God, ew, but okay. Ah. And then you're in. But if you're not in, it's just like another sexual harassment lawsuit, which is like, you know what I'm saying? Pick or tape that shit. Your boy's on number 51. Anyway, you don't have barbells and dumbbells laying in your fucking room or your house. And you actually go to the gym. Feeder workouts are sort of out. You can do them with body weight stuff, but that really limits things. Next, your warm-ups need to be very limited to save time because if you're doing workouts with intense or intense complete warm-ups, you know, three sets to warm up, gee, you know, this is going to be like a lot of time you spend. Now it's not a feeder workout really. You're just like training a lot and it takes a lot of time and maybe gives you better results, but it's just another way of saying high frequency. It's not a special thing. The thing with feeder workouts is that you kind of like your set is the working set and the warm-up set. So a big rule, which I'll repeat again later, is high rep training is the only way to do this. If you do this heavy, sets of five to 10, even sets of 10 to 15, too heavy, you can get hurt. Um, or rather, more technically, the probability of getting hurt is, I find, uh, not reasonably worth the trade-off. Sets of 15, 20, 25, 30 reps, yeah, you can just pick up some dumbbells, isolation movement, especially if you go slow on the eccentric and kind of maybe get a little going quickly on your reps as you go through the set and feel warmer, then it's totally fine in that case. But um, a lot of times it's it's a little bit hard to go uh, hard to go hard. It's a little difficult to go hard on a set and really activate some muscle fibers if it takes like you're not clued in yet. Like warm ups really activate you now. To play the dream within a dream fucking sequence here, if you are more slower twitch and you want to grow your muscles and the vast proportion of your muscles that you're trying to grow, the muscle fibers are slower twitch, then actually they're fully active and being stimulated for hypertrophy without you ramping the nervous system a ton. You got to ramp the nervous system a ton to hit the bigger, faster twitch motor units. And if your muscle that you're trained feeder sets isn't really super fast twitch anyway, it's kind of like, well, that's okay. As soon as you start rep one, the hypertrophy gains are coming. So and mind you, they're very small gains, but with higher frequencies and a good dedicated block of this kind of stuff, you can make some progress. Another downside, the literature on this is uh, not ultra compelling, but it's also at the same time pretty clear. Anabolic resistance accumulates in proportion to how much volume you do and in proportion to how frequently you do that. If you train your legs once every three or four days, it's going to take you like, oh, four to six weeks to get pretty resistant anabolically to more leg growth before you deload or take some time away or switch exercises or something. But if you train like every day for the same muscle or even every other day, definitely every day, you know, just a few weeks later, you're you're going to be spinning a lot of wheels more than you are growing. You'll still grow, but, but the magnitude of growth quickly levels off. So feeder workouts are not something that typically works on a full-time including basis. You're not like, yeah, I've been doing bicep feeder workouts for a year. Like that's probably not the smartest way to do it. I'll talk about what a smarter way to do it is in a sec, but it's probably not training ultra high frequency for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months because anabolic resistance, your propensity to grow muscle from further exposures to training, it starts to fall off. If you choose the wrong movements or your technique is off and you're training that five or six times a week uh, with no warm up you can wreck temporarily, of course, your joints and connective tissues. They just put them in a, in a real bad way. So you got to be careful about this kind of stuff. And this is a distinct downside. Someone's like, yeah, man, a fucking elbow's hurt. I go, yeah, what have you been doing? Like, fuck theater workouts, tricep extensions every five hours. <laughs> fucking Christ. I can tell you why your elbow's hurt. It's the theater workouts every five hours. There's no, there's no run up to that joke. Lastly, a big downside is, you know, you make a lot of progress warming up and doing basic compound heavy shit. 
in your actual dedicated two to four time a week per muscle hypertrophy or strength training sessions. And if you do too many feeder workouts between sessions, you're going to be sapped and not recovered and not progressing in your actual sessions. It's like trying to get as many calories in as you can, but for your four meals a day that you got to smash calories, you're not eating much because you're snacking so much between meals. Either way, it adds up the calories. Some people, if they snack, it's great. That's how they get the calories. But for other people, snacks really crush their appetite. And that continual input of snacks means they just won't eat that many calories. So you've got to kind of find out which person you are. In this case, some people can recover totally fine from feeder workouts. And it's really for most people a matter of how much they do. But there is a way very easily that many people can get themselves into a situation where they just get like what I would call like volume greedy. They go, oh my God, oh my fucking God, or frequency greedy. They're like, yes, I'm going to do feeder workouts. I'm going to do every fucking hour. I'm kidding. There's every day or four days a week. And I'm also going to do my bicep sessions the other two days a week. And after two weeks, they're like, go to the regular bicep session. They're like, fuck man, I'm just gassed, bro. My biceps have nothing. And it's like, well, you trained them 18 times in the last two weeks. The fuck are they supposed to recover? So there's an imbalance with feeder workouts between stimulus and recovery that can really occur. Oh, your stimulus is is fucking happening. You're doing it. But your recovery is so low, the adaptive processes might have trouble. And then once your recovery sinks low enough, even presenting a good stimulus is tough because you're just too tired. It's like if you've ever picked up like three girls at the same time at the club and they're like, just do it. Just do us, Dexter. Just do the thing that you do to us with your your genitals. And you're like, well, ladies, get ready. And you go, uh, you'll get tired. And then uh, girl number three is like, I kind of felt like maybe you took it out on all the other two girls. And you're like, well, yeah, six hours of sex is uh, is a gift I have from God. But God did not give me the ability to have seven hours of real so – I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to get myself canceled again. Isn't that right, Scott, the video guy? In any case, recommendations. First, before you go – to try feeder workouts, try to save yourself for marriage. See, it's turned into a wholesome family channel. Try to save yourself for focused, hard sessions two to four times a week. That's how grandpa made his gains. That's how dad made his gains. Then, then dad, mom and dad didn't get along that one time and dad went away for three to six months. But then he came back and he started doing two to four sessions just like he was doing in prison. So the core element here is that great sessions coupled with enough time to get great recovery to build the foundation for another great session is a formula that works the best of all of them on average. And it's the one you should try first. But if you have done this for a while, and especially on some muscle groups that seem to be really hard to stimulate a ton in one session. Like there's only so much you can do for your biceps sometimes. And you're like, I can only train them so hard and I can I can definitely do more sessions per week than I am. Then maybe you can experiment with feeder sets for a mesocycle or something like that, just four to six weeks and see how you progress, right? And in the RP Hypertrophy app, you can actually put in feeder sets if you like. You just like throw extra biceps in at the end of each workout. And when you complete the workout, don't complete the bicep stuff, leave it alone. And then later that night, you're like, oh shit, I actually still have to do biceps. And just one set of, you know, 30 reps of curls and say complete, and then you're good to go. Some muscles are going to be better candidates than others. Feeder sets on quads, you're fucking insane. You're going to blow your legs right off your body or just get so tired. You're not going to be able to recover. You're going to have shitty workouts. Your legs might start to shrink. It's more endurance athlete type of stuff. Chest, back, it typically is not a good idea. One of the stupidest ideas I've ever heard was from a bodybuilding coach I won't name uh, about uh, 15 years ago. He said that the key to a big back was to do 50 chin-ups every day. Every day. I, I don't think a single one of his athletes could have done 50 chin-ups in a session that was less than an hour long. Um, and I don't think he had ever done that himself. I, think, I just don't know why he said it. But if you tried that shit, you would grind your shoulders and elbows off of the fucking body. The stump, stupidest shit I've ever heard. Big muscle groups that are strong. Do not do feeder sets for them. Do regular conventional training because both from a muscular perspective – 
from a neurological and central nervous system perspective, and from the perspective of joint and connective tissue integrity, you want to have plenty of recovery time between these sessions. However, for muscles like forearms and biceps and rear and side delts, they're not particularly positioned to take a lot of damage. They're not particularly big or strong in most cases. So you can crank out lots of volume with them over the course of the week. And if each session is, well, stimulative, but not too voluminous, one or two sets at a time, you can crank away and get pretty good results and you won't break apart like Mr. Potato Head. Definitely don't do them all the time. Again, a mesocycle at a time, see how your results progress. They are not, they are not the magic tool that everyone is fucking doing. There is this real big dichotomy between shit that jacked people actually do and shit you see on Reddit that people with no profile picture say jacked people actually do. Because if you go, I'm not to pick on Reddit, you can go on 8chan, 4chan. Uh, I was saying, I was going to say another joke, but it, I say this word and it will get us canceled for sure. Um, ew, easy, Mike. There are people that will confidently assure you that XYZ method or food or approach or supplement is the way to do things. Some fraction of those people are completely correct. Some fraction of those people are marginally correct, is sort of uh, nuanced to what they're saying. And some of those people are just like making shit up whole cloth or just work for them and works for fucking nobody else. There's this community of people that think feeder sets are like the answer. Some of them are just repeating shit they heard other people say. Some of them are genetically just not very prone to be getting jacked because they are slower twitch in fiber composition on average more than other people. And actually for them, feeder sets work. But that does not guarantee that they're going to work for you. There are no fucking hacks, folks. There are no hacks. They don't exist. I mean, hack squat exists at your gym. But after you do a few sets of 10 on that, you realize that is not a hack. That is just straight up like gnarly hard work. So don't think like, oh, feeder sets. That's the thing, right? Like if you are struggling with your muscle gain, there is no panacea that will come save you. None. And including anabolic steroids. Because if you take them, sometimes you get amazing results. Sometimes your genetics suck for steroid compatibility and you just get like test flu and dick else happens to you and you don't gain much muscle. So don't think that this is the answer, the solution. Think this is an interesting tool you can try to put in your toolbox and use for about a month at a time and see how your results progress. For these one mesocycle sprints of using feeder sets, if you're going to do them, I would recommend doing them like this. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. If you are able to turn it up psychologically after a minimal warm up or no warm up at all, totally cool. Don't rush. Don't pick up the weights and just start doing this. What I would suggest for feeder sets really is to take a weight that is 20 to 30 percent, or sorry, 20, 30 percent, uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, RM, right? Rep max. And you do, do like five reps with it nice and slow and then put the dumbbells down and wait like 30 seconds. Stretch it out, move around. That's a good enough warm up for most cases that you just highly unlikely get hurt. Then crank the set and go real close to failure. And I would actually recommend doing my reps, like two break my reps. So hit like 15, rest a little while, hit another fucking eight or some shit, rest a little while, and hit another five, and then you're good. Nice swollen pump. Everything's great. High reps only, no rush. One extra warm-up of five reps with the working weight is going to take 30 seconds to do, and then 30 seconds later, you're going to be able to go again. That's one extra minute of your day. If you do four feeder sets a week, that's four fucking minutes of the week that can take your injury propensity and, and your joint connective tissue strain that you put on it. Because, you know, the first set always feels like shit. The second set feels way better. And just radically reduce it. I'd say that's a really good return on investment. 
If you're getting great pumps, keep doing it. Keep doing it. If you're not getting great pumps, it's probably not a whole lot is happening. You're just getting more tired. If your joints and connective tissues are handling it well, amazing. Do not be that person. It's like, yeah, man, fucking Maya reps on tricep extensions every hour are hurting my joints, but like fucking war out there, brother. No, don't. Don't do anything to fuck up your joints. You've got to take care of them shits. They're going to be in there for the long haul. If it doesn't affect the rest of your program, you're good to go. If you're coming in and your underhand pull-ups and your rows are still good, your biceps aren't tired because the 16 hours before that you did a feeder set or two, your biceps healed, amazing. If they're not healed, uh, push that workout back, reduce the volume, do something to it so that your core workouts for the muscle groups involved are still awesome. And if it seemed to give you good results, Sometimes you can visually after a month be like, damn, your boy's getting fucking jacked or your weights and reps in the feeder workouts are going up pretty impressively and or your weights and reps in your regular workouts are going up or after you take a deal a week, you come into your regular workouts and you're like, holy fucking shit, my biceps are bigger and stronger. This is fucking amazing. Then you're onto some shit. If that doesn't happen to you in a mesocycle, take two mesocycles back in normal training, come back and try it again. You never want to try something just once usually, especially if it doesn't hurt you. Try it again. Uh, Alter some things, modify some things, be more intelligent. I would start with something like two extra feeder workouts of one my rep set each per week. Try that for a month. That might help. If that doesn't work, you got to think, okay, was it too much stimulation or too little stimulation? Because it could have been like, yeah, I got a little pump and then, eh, I don't know, it's just not enough. I never got tired. I never got sore. I never got fatigued. My workouts never got interfered with. Try three or four. If on the other hand, you you try, you know, three or four and you're like, oh, that's way too much, try two to three again. Somewhere over one or two mesocycles or maybe three, you're going to figure out this is fucking sweet. I got something really good. I can change. I need to change something. I need to switch machines or switch exercises, et cetera. Or eh, it's just that this isn't it. And that's totally fine because there's always conventional awesome training that'll hook you up. By the way, have you downloaded and paid me money for the RP Hypertrophy app? My butler's checked. It doesn't seem like your your um your gold coins from John Wick slid under my fucking under the table to to so that I can go buy cool underworld stuff like John Wick does. I was gonna say underworld Lamborghinis, but I have a rule with my butlers. Anything you bring into my home, which is acres of property, needs to be totally legal, especially the Lamborghinis. In any case, uh, link in the description, go get that app. And members, we always have more videos for you and they're always nerdy and they're always sciencey or they're just me making penis jokes. But uh, goddamn, do I get on a roll? So check out the member section as well. And see you guys next time.